Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day everyone. How are you? So this is Teacher Lin again. Today we are going to read the synopsis by chapters for Form 5 novel Sing to the Dawn by Min Fong Ho. Chapter 1 Dawan, 14 years old, and Kwai, 13 years old, spent the morning talking about the scholarship to study in a city school. Kwai was quite hopeful and Dawan felt that she would not get the scholarship because she was just a girl. Their parents thought that it was foolish and wasteful to send girls to school. Chapter 2 The teacher asked his students what they saw beneath their house in the morning. He had a long discussion with the students about the landlord taking away sacks of rice beneath their houses. The headmaster headed to the class and listened to the discussion before going off. The teacher and students discussed what they should do if they won the scholarship. The teacher announced that Dawan won the scholarship. Chapter 3 The classmates surrounded Dawan as soon as they heard that she won the scholarship. Kwai was unhappy and upset that Dawan won the scholarship, not him. Dawan told her family that she got the scholarship and that made her father angry. He accused Dawan of taking her own brother's chance away from him. Dawan's mother was reluctant to give her opinion, being scared and loyal to her husband. Dawan's grandmother, however, supported her. Dawan and her grandmother planned to go to Noi's house. However, halfway there, Dawan's mother decided to go with Dawan instead of her grandmother. Her grandmother was too old and it was a long journey. It was a three kilometers walk under this hot sun. Chapter 4 The Conversation at Noi's House Dawan's mother, Noi, who is Dawan's cousin, five to six years older than her, a married and had a small baby, and Gan, Noi's husband. Noi said that going to the city was useless, not good, and not healthy. She went to the city to work, not to study, but had to come back home because the city was an ugly and cruel place to work. Gan worked in the city as part of a work crew. Noi and Gan tried to discourage Dawan from going to the city because it would bring more harm than good. Mr. Faspras, an, an army officer, made a deal with Noi's family in order not to take Gan into the army. Therefore, Noi and Gan had to pay him a lot of money. After listening to what Noi and Gan said, Dawan was still determined to go to the city. Chapter 5 Kwai was upset when he knew that Dawan and the mother went to see Noi and Gan. Kwai and Dawan argued over the issue of winning the scholarship. Kwai came in second in the examination, but he was hoping to go to the city. At the same time, Kwai was scared of telling the father his result because Dawan might not be allowed to go. He was in a confused state. Chapter 6 During dinner, Dawan's father was very unapproachable. He did not want her to go to the city. He thought that boys going to the city to study would be better than girls. Kwai was hopeful after he heard that. Dawan's father would not listen to her reasons. She decided to see the gentle old monk of the village temple. Maybe he could influence her father to change his mind. Chapter 7 Dawan went to the busy and crowded marketplace alone early in the morning because she wanted to meet the monk at the temple. She met a girl, Bao, who sold lotus butts and caged sparrows. Dawan wanted to buy a lotus butt, but 
Bao gave it for free to her. She also wanted to free a caged bird to make merry, but she did not have enough money, although it only cost 10 cents. From their conversation, Davan found out that Bao was Vichai's sister, and Vichai is Davan's classmate, the boy who sat behind her in class. Chapter 8 Dawan went to the sea. Dawan went to see the old monk in the temple. They talk in the open courtyard outside the temple. Dawan's teacher and the old monk were good friends, so he already told the monk about Dawan's scholarship. Dawan pleaded with the monk so that he could persuade her father to let her to go study in the city. Her father respected the monk and would listen to what he said. The old monk did not see the need for Dawan to go to the city school. He refused to help her because he did not believe in the idea of girls furthering their studies. He talked much about the Holy One's teaching in heaven. Dawan ran off in bitterness and tears. Chapter 9 Baal allowed Dawan to release a bird for free. Bao's brother Vichai came to the market stall and hit her because of that. Kwai stopped Vichai from hitting Bao. After realizing that Bao knew about what happened between Dawan and Kwai, Kwai wanted to slap Bao. Bao accused of both Vichai and Kwai as big bullies. Kwai pushed Dawan away and when she tried to stop him from hitting Bao, Dawan landed on top of a pile of broken bird cages, injuring herself. Cousin Noi helped Dawan with her bleeding ankle. Dawan limped off alone to return home in the rain. Chapter 10 In the heavy rain, Dawan went to the river to sit on the old bridge, but Kwai was already there. Kwai was thinking about Dawan's words about him being a bully. The siblings talked about what happened and expressed their feelings about the whole issue. Kwai realized that Dawan was a caring sister. She gave him the umbrella, and he finally made his decision. Both returned home together. Chapter 11 On their way home in the heavy rain, they saw their father leading the buffalo home, which Kwai forgot to do. They decided to hide from him because he looked angry, but later they approached him. The father heard from the teacher that Kwai got second in the test and was angry at him for not telling him about it. Back at home, their grandmother tried to comfort the scared Dawan. Father had a good and serious discussion with Kwai and Dawan about the scholarship. Father was very reluctant to let Dawan go to the city school. But Dawan and Kwai managed to convince him. He finally allowed Dawan to go. Kwai was both happy and sad at the same time about the father's decision. Chapter 12 Dawan's last morning at home. At dawn, she went to the top of the old wooden bridge and saw that Kwai was already there. The siblings talked about Dawan's leaving the village. Kwai would miss Dawan because no one would be there to watch the sunrise with him. He cried and ran off. Dawan started singing her morning song one last time before going home to get ready to go to the city. The last chapter, chapter 13. At first Dawan was unsure if she wanted to leave because she would miss everything and everyone in her village. Her grandmother gave her a lot of advice and encouragement to persuade her to go. She gave Dawan a glass jar of lotus bud. When she was boarding the bus to go to the city, Kwai was nowhere to be seen. Although many people in the village sent her off, she was not happy as Kwai was not there. Along the bus journey, she saw Kwai on the bridge that they usually went to. He was waving goodbye to her, singing their favorite morning song, which she continued singing until she could not see him anymore. The End